Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. Over the past few lessons, we've gone over looping. The while loop says, while a test condition is true, do a bunch of commands. The until loop says, until a test condition is true, do a bunch of commands. And a for loop says, do a bunch of commands for each entry in a list. Now, for a while loop, the only way to get out of the while loop is with that test condition being false. The only way to get out of an until loop is for the test condition to become true. The only way to get out of a for loop is to go through every single entry in the list. However, corn shell does offer you an additional option. If you're in the middle of the code between the do to done and you decide for whatever reason that you don't want to be in that loop anymore, you can issue a break statement and that will break you outside of that loop and bring you down to right after where the done is and start execution from there. Corn Shell also allows you another feature which is called the continue statement. What that does is if you're in the middle of the commands and you decide for whatever reason you don't want to execute all of the commands, you put a continue statement in and it will move you back up to the top of your loop, to the while statement, the until statement, or the for statement, and start over from there. It bypasses all the commands that are after the continue all the way down to the done. Now, I am not a big fan of the break command or the continue command. For the most part, your code can be written without them. My suggestion is, is that if you can write the code without using a continue statement or a break statement, please write the code without the continue statement or the break statement. However, if you absolutely have to, then put it in. I wanted to go over an example of how a continue and a break statement would work with inside of a loop. Here's our loop. We have a for loop. It assigns variable numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8 into variable var. And then we have commands for do to done. And inside of our for loop, we have first thing we do is the variable var equal to 3. If it is, then we don't want to execute any more code for this particular iteration of the loop. So we issue a continue command, and the loop will go back up to the top here and it would assign the next entry in our list to the variable var. Okay, assuming that the variable var is not equal to 3, then what we're going to do is we're going to print the value of it, and right here is how we do that. Next, we're going to check to see if the variable var is equal to 6. If it's equal to 6, then we've had enough. We don't want to do any more of this for loop. We just want to break out. So we let the user know that we're breaking out, and then we break. And in that case, we'd go down right to the done, and we'd start execution of the code from then on in. Now, if you notice up the top, there were two more entries after 6. It was 7 and 8. However, because we break out of the for loop when the variable is equivalent to 6, we will not get to 7 or 8. So, let's actually run this thing. As you can see, the first time, the for loop assigned 1 to var, 
it checked to see if var was 3. It wasn't, so it skipped over this portion of code. It then printed it out, and it checked to see if var was equal to 6. It wasn't, so it skipped over that portion of code. And then it went to done. And then it went back up and assigned 2 to var. And as you can see, first time through, it assigned, excuse me, it did say dollar $var is 1. The second time through, it did say dollar $var is 2. Now, the third time through, it assigned 3 to var, and it checked to see if var was equal to 3. It was. So what did we do? We went inside of the then defy, and inside of there it just says continue. So we never get to this portion where it says print dollar $var is, in that case it would have been 3. And just looking at the output, as you can see, it did skip over the 3, the printing of the 3, but it did print out the 5. So what happened was it checked to see if it was 3, was 3, it issued the continue command which says go back up here and grab the next entry in your list which is 5, it assigned 5 to var, check to see if it was 3, it wasn't, so it printed it out, it says var is 5, which is what we have here. Next time around, excuse me, it checked to see if var was 6, it wasn't, it skipped over that, went to the done, and then it went back up here, assigned 6 to var, and went inside the loop. Well, var was not 3, so it skipped over this portion of the code. It did print dollar $var is 6, as you can see. And then it got down to here, where it says, is var equivalent to 6. Well, it is, so therefore we go inside the then defy, and what does it say in there? It says print at 6 breaking, which it did in fact do, and then it issued a break command, which says go down to the done portion, and after that start executing code after the done, which in this case says outside of for loop. And as you can see, it did print at 6 breaking, and then it said outside of for loop. And as you can see, it never did get to the 6 or 7, excuse me, it never got to 7 or 8, which were in fact entries in the list for the for list. Like I said, I am not a big fan of the break command, menu command, but they are there if you need them.